This video derives the relativistic Doppler equation from first principles for a detector receding from a source along a straight line at constant speed. It then generalizes this result to the case for a detector approaching a source along a straight line again at constant speed. So we have a detector that is moving away from a source of radiation with a constant speed. And what we want to know is how does the, rate, how does the frequency of the radiation, as measured by the detector, relate to that of the source. So let's start with two inertial frames, S and S prime, or S dash in standard configuration, and moving with constant relative speed. <coughs> so in frame S we have the radiation source, and in S prime moving along the same X, common X, X prime axis, uh, moving with, with constant speed V. And it has a detector at rest in this frame. All right, now, coming back to frame S, the wavelength, frequency, and period of the source, as measured by an observer at rest in frame S, are given by lambda emitted, frequency emitted, which is C over lambda emitted, and the time, or the period, for a single wavelength is 1 over the frequency and from the source here. So in frame S, the time taken for one complete cycle, one complete wavelength to be emitted is delta T, and that's the period of the wave. <coughs> All right. Now the detector and the observer are at rest in frame S prime and observe the following quantity. So in S prime, the time taken to receive a full wavelength will be delta T dash, and this is the received period of the wave, and one or one over the frequency received. Now we'll see a little bit more to this term here, how long it takes to receive a wave. Now this observer is moving with respect to the rest frame of the source and so determines that the time taken to release a single wavelength as detected in the S prime frame is delta T dash which is gamma times delta T. The observer in S prime is moving relative to S is, and is not at rest with S and so this observer here in S prime measures dilated time. <coughs> so his or her recording of the value delta T dash, time for a complete wavelength to pass by, will be gamma, the Lorentz factor, times delta T. Delta T was measured in the rest frame of the source, which is frame S. Now, during the time taken for the source to emit a single wavelength of radiation, the detector has also moved. So the observer in S prime determines that in his or her frame of reference, the detector has moved a distance d prime, this one here, of v, the speed, relative speed of the two frames, <coughs> times delta t dash. So the observer in s dash here is aware that he or she has moved this distance d dash, which is the speed times delta t dash, as the wave is coming in and reaching the detector. So. So the total time taken by the wavelength, or the received period of the wavelength to reach the detector, as measured by the observer in S prime over here, will be this time dilated value we mentioned earlier. <coughs> um, a moving observer is going to record a different time period than a stationary observer in S, plus the S prime frame itself has moved this distance d dash, and it will do that in a time d dash divided by c. So the total received period of the wave, the received period, is this time, the dilated one, plus this bit here. So just as the wave, the front edge of the wave reaches the detector, the detector is also moving as well. So the total time to record the full arrival of that wave must take into account the length of time for the wave to pass through the detector, plus the fact that the frame S prime has moved this amount which took a finite amount of time to achieve. In fact, it took d dash on c to achieve. So 1 over the received frequency, that's the received period, is made up of these two terms here, these two objects. <coughs> All right, so let's have a look at this then. Delta t dash plus d dash on c, well, delta t dash, the d dash can be replaced by v times delta t dash, as we saw earlier, over c. Let's factor out the delta t dash here, 1 plus leaving us delta t dash times 1 plus v over c. Now replace delta t dash 
this is the dilated time with the Lorentz factor gamma times delta t, and that's the delta t as measured in the rest frame of the source, <coughs> times this factor here. Now, the Lorentz factor, the gamma factor here, is 1 over the square root of v squared on c squared. Uh, delta t, as we saw, was in the uh, time for a complete wave to be emitted in frame s from the source, is 1 over the frequency, 1 over f emitted times this object here. So next page over. All right, we can write the um, Lorentz factor as 1 over the square root of 1 minus v on c, 1 plus v on c, difference of perfect squares underneath the radical there, times 1 over f emitted, times this factor we had on the far right there. Let's bring this factor here over on top, the numerator here, and we'll see that, and then we'll split the radical here underneath, so we have this square root of this object times square root of this object. And we notice that this object here is really made up of two of these down here multiplied together. Two of these square roots, 1 plus v over c, multiplied together. So one of those can cancel out. And we're left with 1 over f emitted times square root of 1 plus v on c over square root of 1 minus v on c. Let's put the radical over the whole fraction. And we get c plus v over c minus v times 1 over f emitted. Okay, now for a receding source, the detected or received frequency from the, in, the receding, in the receding detector, the received frequency, 1 over f received, is 1 over f emitted times this object, or, let's present it more nicely, flip both sides, and we get the received frequency is the emitted frequency times this factor here. Now, where the source and detector are approaching each other, we simply replace V with minus V, and we get this object here, F received is now F emitted times the square root of this factor here, which was the reciprocal of this. So in summary, a receding source and detector, so a detector moving away from a source, or a source moving away from a detector, resulting in redshifted radiation being detected with a frequency F received is F emitted times this factor here, with the C minus V on top, C plus V underneath the radical there. Now, if the source and detector are approaching each other, resulting in blue shifted radiation being detected, it will have a frequency F received is F emitted times the square root of C plus V over C minus V. And they're the two cases we have. <coughs>